Hello, this is Dr. Greg Arnold of Complete Chiropractic Healthcare, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation on throwing mechanics, uh, the final piece to the injury prevention puzzle. This is something I thought uh, would be a good collaboration between uh, myself as a chiropractor and a baseball pitching coach and orthopedic surgeons in the area and also physical therapists in the area. A quick uh, introduction on my background. I'm originally from Long Island. I graduated high school in 1995. I was uh, obtained a baseball scholarship to Penn State University. Eventually got my uh, Doctor of Chiropractic degree in 2004, practiced for uh, seven years in California, six, six of those years working with Little Leagues, um, certified as a strength and conditioning coach uh, by the National Strength and Conditioning Association, certified by the National Pitching Association since 2004, and I frequently attend uh, the ASMI Injuries Conference in uh, Alabama, and finally also write nutrition articles for a nutrition company. So today's presentation, we're going to discuss the current state of arm injuries in baseball pitchers, uh, but most importantly, we're going to talk about how to use video uh, post-surgery or even if there's no surgery required, uh, just as a measure of education for proper mechanics for the baseball players, and also to discuss the value of muscle testing, internal versus external uh, rotational strength in the shoulder as a marker of possible injury risk. So uh, a great quote uh, was given by Peter Gammons when he was interviewed a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago actually, uh, on a sports radio talk show where they're really starting to put the blame for these Major League Baseball injuries as what's going on during the teenage years with these kids. And the number one risk factor for injury is year-round baseball. And the the deluge of uh, radar guns at showcases and year-round baseball and playing on multiple teams, things like that. So that was a great quote was, I think it starts with these traveling teams when they're 15 years old. They're going to showcases and over-pitching. And finally, a lot of the injuries in the major leagues are coming from what they do between the ages of 12 and 21. Uh, ASMI, uh, position statement for youth baseball pitchers, What's good about it is the need to get these kids to rest, preferably uh, four months out of the year, but usually about two to three months. So no more 100 innings in a, in a year has been looked at as the benchmark for injury risk. Uh, but also, if you look at number six, learning good throwing mechanics, and that's something that we're going to talk about in this presentation. Uh, Dr. James Andrews, at one of his presentations at the ASMI conference, to kind of sum up uh, the day of the presentation, so he gives a list of things that we can talk about with young throwers, but uh, number 11, the best way to treat the injury is to prevent it. And his second second method of uh, uh, injury prevention is, is biomechanics, even more so than strength and conditioning, but just learning how to properly throw the baseball. Uh, so Tom House from the National Pitching Association has a quote that I use quite often, and that is, baseball is a game of failure taught by negative people in a misinformation environment. And the misinformation aspect is what we're going to be focusing on uh, in the coming minutes. So we talk about surgery and then rehab, or no surgery but rehab, to identify muscle weaknesses and uh, regain proper proprioception, balance, but what can we do after that that can further add to the uh, minimization of re-injury? And this is where we're going to talk about baseball uh, video, uh, video analysis. And Kevin Wilk at the 2014 ASMI Injuries Conference uh, that I attended, this is a quote that he said during one of his presentations, baseball mechanics analysis is imperative. If you wait too long to get an analysis done, you're asking for trouble. And Dr. Glenn Fleissig, uh, the head biomechanist at ASMI, is talking about how uh, video analysis is being done proactively to uh, get a snapshot of players' mechanics when they're healthy and not when they get injured. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, a video analysis. So we look at this young player. This is 
I chose this video because it really, this young player's mechanics are what I most commonly see uh, among young pitchers. So we'll take a look uh, a couple times here. And go ahead and look one more time. And then we'll go ahead and slow everything down. So the first thing we're going to do is, is take a look at the, the starting stance. If we see where the kids come together, you know, we teach kids athletic maneuvers in other sports, lacrosse, soccer, basketball, wrestling, and we talk about feet apart, knees bent, and yet we're teaching these kids the concept of actually putting the feet together and standing tall. And this is actually making a much less athletic player to the point that when they start to move, their whole body gets to here. And this is where the kids need to be starting. If you see how much the head drops right here, this is actually causing uh, a postural change and can increase the risk of making an error during the throw. The more the head drops, the more we lose energy. So if we look at the back knee of this young pitcher, this is actually where we would like this pitcher to start because from this moment on, he moves straight to the plate. So we want him to start in this position, not start all the way up here because this is not where his body wants to be. So the first thing we would do with this young pitcher is bring him down to this position. But we're going to go ahead and stop him right here about the halfway point and then compare it with a pitcher from another video. So if we take a look at the picture on the left, we see him a little bit more bent, but we see as soon as he starts to move, his body moves toward the plate. There's no staying back. There's no balance point. He's moving his center of gravity toward the plate, and that's going to bring him a closer distance with his stride. But if we look at the differences in the two postures, the biggest difference we can see is what the front glove is doing in regards to the front elbow. And this is, for me, is the number one mechanical fix that we have to make with these young kids, is not worrying about what the throwing arm is doing, but actually worrying about what the front glove is doing. And if we look at the picture on the left, he's nice and closed, looking over his front elbow, keeping his glove chest high, whereas we look at the picture on the right, and his front elbow has already started to fly open. We watch him come down, and that glove already flies way open, and that is going to set up a kinetic chain problem that's going to create a uh, misplaced stress uh, on the arm where we see the pitcher on the left smooth hips are first down the hill landing with the front elbow nice and closed and as the pitcher on the left turns to throw the ball his glove actually stays relatively steady there's no tucking of the glove there's no bringing of the glove backwards but he actually stays consistent to the plate whereas we see the pitcher on the right he's already flying open and at the moment of ball release, his glove is all the way down at his hip, where the pitcher on the left is nice and controlled, keeping the glove chest high. And as we see this pitcher finish his throw, we see him have a nice strong front leg and finish in a perfect fielding position, which means he's got all of his energy going toward the plate, under control, and consistent, whereas the pitcher on the left will throw the ball and watch where he falls. He throws the ball and he falls all the way off to the side. And when you see a young pitcher do this, it's a marker of lack of body control, lack of consistency, and therefore lack of a consistent throwing motion and an increased risk for injury. So I hope by slowing all of this down, you will see some of the things that we're trying to look at and correct with these young pitchers. Now we're going to go ahead and look at them from the front, and you'll get an even bigger idea of the essence and the need for uh, body control when throwing the baseball. So if we take a look at this pitcher, again, let's actually switch them so they're kind of side to side. If we look at the pitcher on the right, going ahead and throw the ball, we talk about that nice front elbow staying nice and closed. And then if you watch this pitcher on the right as he turns to throw, his head stays in the same spot. And we look at any rotational movement, whether we're swinging a, base, we're swinging a baseball bat, uh, a slap shot, a tennis racket to hit a tennis ball, at the moment of rotation, the head is steady. But when we watch the pitcher on the right, as 
is commonly done with what with young kids are still being taught, we will see a vastly different body posture. Okay, so we'll see where this young pitcher is, but once we see where he throws, his head moves to the his head moves to the left because his glove is taking him in that direction. And you look at this, what we call, we look at this late posture change, and this creates a very, very bad, uh, inconsistent release and just increased risk of injury over the course of this young player's career as compared to the pitcher on the right coming down the hill nice and steady, head rotation steady, glove, glove is under control, finishing in a good position versus this young pitcher falling off to the side. So you see there's a lot that we can show with this slow motion analysis, uh, but we also identify many things that need to be done in young pitchers that will help minimize injury risk. So the final thing that we can do for these young players when we get them off the field is actually get them in the office and perform some muscle testing with a JTEC uh, muscle tracker. And if we look at this study that was done, uh, preseason shoulder strength uh, measurements, where they looked at the ratio of internal, of external versus internal uh, rotators in the shoulder, we can see what the highlighted uh, in the top right box, we can look at the strength ratio, and they noticed that pitchers who had the highest injury risk rates uh, had a 0.724 um, ratio in the shoulder, meaning that the external rotators in the shoulder were nearly 28% weaker than the uh, internal rotators, where the, the pitchers who had the lowest injury rates uh, among all the pitchers had much stronger external rotators. And this is something that we can objectively do in the office uh, to identify kids who, even though they have no shoulder pain now, they may be setting the table for injury uh, years down the road. And this was a great conclusion by the researchers, weakness or poor coordination of the external rotators can also lead to a lack of muscular control during late cocking and deceleration, which may in turn predispose pitchers to shoulder injury. So the stronger the external rotators, the lower the rates of injury risk. So if, if we look at what we can do for these young players, uh, and this is a service that I can provide um, to your patients as they make their way uh, down the road to recovery, either surgically or non-surgically, is we can do the video analysis. Again, we take a look at the, the video, and then we go ahead and we get them in the office, and we do the uh, JTEC uh, muscle testing, and we can identify them further for um, uh, injury risk. So the final thing that I recommend that you that you have all your students do and all your patients, excuse me, do is to uh, do some weighted jump rope. You can get them in a local sports authority sports store. For some reason, Dick's Sporting Good doesn't have it. Uh, Sporting Sport Authority does. And they did a 2000 study in volleyball players. And they had two different groups. One did regular jump rope and the other did weighted jump rope with one pound weights in the handles. And all they did was three one minute sets. One minute off, one minute on, excuse me, one minute on, one minute off, one minute on, one minute off, and then one minute on. So you're talking uh, five minutes a day. That's all they did. And they did weighted jump rope or non-weighted jump rope. And those in the weighted jump rope group had a 55% increase in infraspinatus external rotation strength. So why is this so important? Well, a study that came out that same year, and I wrote a newsletter on this that you can see below, they noticed that external rotation weakness was a significant risk factor for injury in baseball pitchers, and yet weighted jump rope specifically strengthened the muscle that was shown to be weak in baseball pitchers. So for me, the weighted jump rope is the single best uh, exercise a rehab injury prevention tool that you can prescribe for your uh, baseball patients. So I hope that you found this information valuable. Uh, here's my information. I, I would uh, be happy to meet with you, speak with you over the phone, uh, have a lunch with you if you would like to sit down and discuss all of these injury uh, prevention measures. So please feel free to give me a call, send me an email, or visit my website. Thank you very much.